Portland now we go to another of the hardest hit areas, the mid coast. Yeah, tens of thousands in the dark there as well. Don Kerrigan's been looking into the damage today and he joins us from Wiscasset. Hey, Don. Hi, Lee and Cindy. Uh, I think we've got our sound problem fixed now. You know, uh, Keith was talking a moment ago about those wind gusts. Our friend Jerry Cushman at Port Clyde reported one on his wind gauge of 74 miles per hour, pretty extreme. But as we heard, gusts of 50, 60 were pretty common in a lot of these areas on the coast. They didn't last all that long, but it was still plenty of time to do a lot of damage. Whether it's my own road or somebody else's road, a lot of them have been blocked after coastal Maine took a beating from the windstorm. On normally busy River Road in Booth Bay, traffic was blocked in multiple spots, including outside Dan Tyson's house. Two pine trees broke off, crashing into the road and tearing his meter off the house. Tyson said the wind was so strong they could feel the house shake. I assumed things were going to happen because uh, we've been here a little over a year and that's what happens. A few miles away, a big branch tore off this tree in East Booth Bay, blowing two transformers and knocking out the neighborhood. The local fire department answered 61 calls in just a few hours. But Lieutenant Joe Hall said it wasn't too bad. Uh, we've had storms where it's a lot worse. Uh, like we were just talking, the microburst, and I think we had, in a matter of half an hour, we had about 72 calls. Still bad enough for the 16,000 or so who lost power for the day. A common sound being heard in the mid-coast today, the hum of a generator from that house. Here's the reason this tree uprooted, came down, took down the power lines, resting on the phone lines, waiting for repair crews to land and take care of it. And while they have many people without power, reopening roads like this one is the top priority for County Emergency Manager Casey Stevens. Once the roads get open, then we yeah, can like, start the restoration process. Uh, the focus is getting the roads open for emergency um, personnel. Um, well, how many crews? And how unlike the big windstorm two years ago, the Emergency Operations Center has some in-person help from Central Maine Power. Davina Houston of CMP is working hand-in-hand -hand to get repair crews where they're needed. To be a liaison so that um, there is easier communication um, between the field crews and the, the municipalities. Not many open buttons. Stephen says it's allowing them to open those blocked roads more quickly. It's making a huge difference. But there is still a lot of work to be done, meaning some county residents may have to be in the dark tonight until everything can get fixed. And we have about 17,000 people without power here in Lincoln County. Knox County, about 11,000 to the South Sagadahawk with about 7,000. And as we heard a couple of minutes ago, sounds like uh, all of these folks are going to have to wait a while longer, probably well past tonight, to get their power. Fortunately, it isn't too cold, as Keith was talking, so we'll all have to just make the best of it. Lee yeah. and Cindy, back yeah. to you.